Dr. Samuel Silver is our next panelist. He is a professor of internal medicine at the University of Michigan Medical School, specializing in malignant and benign hematology, and is director of the University of Michigan Cancer Center Network. Now, Dr. Silver, after going through the valley of the shadow of death, you have been successfully treated for lymphoma. So tell us about becoming the doctor who knows about these things and advises patients, becoming a patient yourself. Well, it's not something I asked for, that's for sure. You bet. Um, the, um, uh, at, at the time that I was uh, um, uh, diagnosed with, uh, with lymphoma, I was director of the bone marrow transplant uh, a service at the University of Michigan. And so I dealt with, as, as I still do, uh, patients and families with uh, malignant hematologic conditions and, uh, and a, a large part of that is uh, having the caregivers in the office as well as the, uh, as well the, as well as the patient. And I think that uh, all of us who are in uh, on, oncology um, have a, an affinity for talking to patients and talking to family members who are caregivers and, and, and do realize the, the, the huge burden that, that both the patient and the, and the caregiver have. And we'll, maybe we'll talk more about that, uh, that later. But um, uh, it, it was ironic, perhaps, I was actually rounding on the bone marrow transplant service feeling perfectly well, and I reached across a table and had a tremendous pain in my arm and then went down to the emergency room, told the ER doc I, I uh, 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 thought I had kind of a common ailment, and she told me I didn't know what I, what I was talking about, which was which, which was correct. <laughs> and, and rather and, humbling, <laughs> professor. <laughs> yeah, she told me, and then uh, she took an X-ray, and then and then asked me to go back and look at the X-ray because it was something that uh, she was unused to seeing in a typical emergency room patient, and it was a totally moth-eaten humerus. And I said, uh, this is probably sarcoma or myeloma or lymphoma. You know, I was going through my differential diagnosis. And then the ER doc said, so what should we do? <laughs> well, you're the, you're the expert. <laughs> and, 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 and I immediately started to say, well, we need to spot urine for Benz Jones protein. And, 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 then I, and then I stopped and I said, you know what I need is an oncologist. And, and, and that oncologist shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be me. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it, it just happened that the, that the second thing on that, on, uh, the second thing I did was I, I, I called my wife, and it was the uh, first football Saturday of the season uh, in Ann Arbor, and I told her that uh, I probably wouldn't be able to make the game, uh, so that's how I kind of introduced the topic to her. Uh, in Ann Arbor, probably football is more important than than uh, than whatever you're trying to think about, at least it used to be. Okay, we're coming back to you as a dual <laughs> role here, but I just am reminded of the old saying about lawyers: the lawyer who represents himself has a fool for a client. Well, well I, to I, I totally agree with that. <laughs> but but the but but the um, the uh, you know what I what I learned um, because I, because it was a it was a tough haul for me. I I, I was uh, on a morphine drip for months in a hospital bed at home and. Uh, and and uh, and my wife Nancy, you know, really, um, uh, she's very uh, task oriented, and uh, and and she stepped up to the plate and was the most important part of what uh, of what was happening. There's there's just no question about that. Yeah, all right, we we have a support group, and that, and you are people who support others, and you have had people support you. Now, our panelist is Jill Ellen Snow, the loving wife of the late Tony Snow, a magnificent communicator uh, in print, in radio, in television, and you'll recall was George W. Bush's great press secretary during most of his second term. Uh, and I can tell you that Tony was admired by conservatives and liberals and Republicans and Democrats, and believe it or not, by the press. <laughs> we liked him, he was one of us. He always shot straight with us, he passed away, of course, in, 19, in 2008 from colon cancer. Uh, Jill Allen, <laughs> when you suddenly discovered what was going to happen to you, Tony, what was it like? Well, I, I think the caregiving portion of it came in two parts for me. Um, Tony had colitis, I think, since his mid-20s. 
and his mother died at 39 of cancer of the colon. So he knew he was high risk. So he was always diligent about getting screening, his screening done. And um, we were planning a large Valentine's Day party, and I was shopping, and he called and he said, I have cancer. And, but in typical Tony form, he was more than glass half full. He was not, the glass was 98% full all the time for Tony. And um, he said, it'll be fine. And he said, you take care of the kids, I'll take care of the cancer. And he, he knew it would hit the press. You have three children. Three children. Mm -hmm. And he said, it's going to hit the press, so you take care of the kids, because all kinds of things will come out. People will be diagnosing it on their own. They'll make it from bad to good. So that was my role. Um, he went to work for the White House. Uh, the president invited us with the children to Camp David, having a fantastic weekend. The next day he went in. He was supposed to go in um, to get checked. The radiologist said she saw a small spot. Doctor assured him it was really nothing, probably a piece of fat that showed up on the screen. Um, so we left very optimistic. The next day, the doctor, after taking him into surgery, said that he was loaded. And he said his colon, every time I would unfold another portion, there was more and more and more. And he said, this is bad. And that's when the second part of my caregiving took place. I was not just watching the children. I was, watch I was taking care of Tony. And what I was did he need from children. you? I'm sorry? What did he need from you? I mean, it's you can list 100 things, but tell us one or it's two It's interesting. Times. He didn't need a lot at that point. He drove himself to chemo. He didn't want anyone to go with him. He said, it's a good nap for me. He would leave work, go to chemo, go back to work again. Um, not until the very end uh, when I, a lot of it took, he was at home. We didn't do hospice. We kept him at home, and he had a bag, and, you know, I had to take, administer the meds and I don't even know what the technical name is for the bag that you feed them with, but it got very hard at the end. And we had to be very careful because the media was running with it, and we were trying to protect the children, and I think the children had to hear more than they needed to hear. Um, they needed to know that we were being honest with them the whole time. So I think it was in many, I was caregiver in many, many ways. Okay. Now, I thought we needed to hear a little bit about how they became caregivers to understand, I guess, what was behind what they did next. 